Hello, everybody. I'm Dean Said, and I'm back for another episode with Kiki Stanton from Kiki Kirby Coaching and Consulting. So, Kiki, welcome. Hello, everybody. Dean, you got it right. I did. I did. Um, I, I, let's just start there, shall we? So, so you're Kiki Stanton from Kiki Kirby Coaching and Consulting. Tell me about the different names. The different names. Okay, so. Well, let's take a back step anyway. So my full name is actually Angeli Ki, but Kiki for short, and I'm Greek. And so what happens is it's a very long name, as you can imagine. So it's Kiki for short. And um, I started in the in the world of recruitment in HR over 20 years ago, and I was known in, in the talent management and the recruitment space um, as Kiki Kirby, because that's what my name was. And um, 10 years ago, I decided to leave that corporate career and retrain as a coach. So I retrained as a coach and then set up my coaching and consultancy business. So I guess I had already been in that space for, for 20 years. Um, all in all, so I decided not to um, not to change the name of the business because I was known in that space. So I set up the business as Kiki Kirby Coaching and Consultancy, and then I got married four years ago, and I'm Kiki Stanton. So I'm Kiki Stanton that works for Kiki Kirby Coaching and Consultancy. Yeah. So, so you got into coaching. Tell me a bit about the coaching that you do. Yeah. So, so the coaching that we do is we, we work um, with heart-centered organizations um, in helping them with their people development, their processes, their, um, the purpose and the way in which they are, are working um, and creating. And we tend to do a lot in the space around where there's a lot of chaos going on in the workplace with their people. And, and it, the reason we do what we do is because it's been born out of the career that I had before. So if we take back and um, go back a few steps. So my mom died when my sister and I were very young to cancer when I was 13. Um, I hated school. I didn't do very well at school, but we were natural entrepreneurs. So my mom worked in fashion and we used to sell our own clothes um, on our driveway back in Zimbabwe. I'm from Zimbabwe. So we, we were naturally these natural entrepreneurs. So I then went on to move to the UK um, when I was 20 and fell into the world of recruitment and HR. I don't think people kind of set out to, to get into recruitment. You just It's a little bit like sales. You just kind of fall yeah, into that world. I was really privileged in having amazing training, starting from the from the ground up. I worked for a startup, I worked for an underperforming team, and then I worked um, in a high performing team environment and, and continued to to build that team. And I was number one too. So I'd always had elements of coaching and people, and and really learned from the ground up. Um, and so there was elements of coaching and mentoring in my career. And then I found myself ten years ago experiencing burnout, having worked really hard, having um, been not really focusing on my well-being really neglecting that and then that led me on to onto the journey of coaching and, and the work that we do now so a lot of the work we do centers around experiences that we that i struggled with um and that that we then end up now helping clients um navigate that that chaos that they tend to be in for a number of different reasons so so when when a client's in chaos whether that's a business which I'm assuming is your consulting part. Yes. And yeah. then the client part is the individual. Yeah. How do they, uh, what kind of chaos are you talking about and how do they get into that chaos? So the chaos typically um, happens without them even actually having knowledge of, of it actually happening because there's so much in, in it. They are so much delivering. I'm sure you probably experience this within your work. They've grown too quickly. They perhaps maybe haven't um, resourced their people appropriately. Perhaps they haven't got the right skill set with them. So it almost happens so quickly because there's not been enough time and an emphasis um, and development um, to have really recognized actually what's going on. So there's been a lack of vision with that. So they find themselves in, in that particular situation very quickly for, I guess, three reasons. One could be because there's um, non-existent, so there's non-existent people policies, there's non-existent kind of normal strategic um, development and growing um, growth. Systems are broken, but actually there's not enough time to to be creating the, the systems because they're broken and you don't actually realize they're broken until something happens, until a crisis happens. Um, or there's a lack of consistency in all of those approaches when it comes to, so if we look at people perhaps, um, you know, for, for the first element is people. So how people are recruited in, um, how they are developed and how they're retained. 
Um, and then the purpose is, is what are the goals attached to those people, to the business? Perhaps there's been a disconnect between communication between leaders and, and their people. Um, it could be around values, is it, it's a disconnect with values. Um, it could be around vision, you know, is, is where we were when we started the business to where we are right now or where we, where we wanted to go moving forward. Um, and then the third thing is around process. So where's the planning involved with, 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 with all of those areas? Where is the implementation? Where is the actual um, purpose of it all? Um, and you, you add all of that together. Even me just talking about it now sounds a lot like how do you mm -hmm. do all of that? So typically when we go and we'll meet the client wherever they are in that particular in that particular chaos. And it could be in, in any of those points that I've just mentioned to you right there. Wow. So it's it's pretty you know, I don't don't take this, don't get offended by this, but a lot of people think of coaching and consulting as quite woolly, but you've just kind of broke it down into a lot of really important aspects there that that kind of are critical to a business. Yeah. Yeah. And why do you think like coaching world is booming? Yes. Do you think that why why do you think that people need this more than ever now compared to, you know, if you rewind, I don't know, five years, ten years, yeah. Yeah. or even, you know, pre-social media, pre all the digital age, why do you think people need kind of more coaching now than they did or maybe they don't but maybe it's just more obvious now what do you think yeah. um i think there's been a real change in the way that we work the way that we are on tap online all of the time the way that we are you know the, the way that technology's moved on um and i think what happens is us as individuals neglect our own well-being we neglect our priorities even last week i was having some conversations with really senior people and i was asking them, what are your priorities and actually, they were like, do you know what? I actually have to go away and think about that because I can't give you that answer right now. So we're in a world that is very busy, a world that's full of overwhelm, a, a world that's ever changing. And so coaching is really powerful for a number of reasons because it take, it allows you to, to pause in, in the reality of your world, even if it's just for an hour or a couple of hours for your team to actually get a, get get a get an outsider in to see actually what's going on what's the reflection where do you need to make some improvements where do you need to actually focus on your well-being i think that is the probably the biggest thing that i've seen over the last 20 years is well-being you know if you make the time for your well-being your staff's well-being you're able then to function at a much higher level and i know this because i've tested it myself through burnout through cancer and in the work that we do with our clients um, and I think it's because we're in this world where you can get everything immediately at, at the forefront. So you feel like you have to be on all of the time. Mm -hmm. But where are you recharging? Where are you resetting? And so a lot of the work that we do tends to center around high performance teams, healthier people, better bottom line results um, with a more, more heart centered approach. And for every organization and every, every, every team, it's going to be very different, isn't it? Mm. Um, but I think add all of that chaos together, the way that things have changed over the last three years with COVID, the way that we're changing now as we're going into the world, you know, remote working, just so many, add all of that together, add all of those pieces of the puzzle together. And, um, and, and coaching can help you in, in all of those areas from a mindset perspective too, of a growth mindset. You know, very often we're living in a mindset of, um, of lack of belief or lack of confidence or imposter or comparison, you know, comparing to others. Um, and, and so we think of this particular mindset, it's trying to navigate the chaos, trying to navigate the, 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 the growth of the business. It's, it's challenging. So let me, I mean, I work, you know, uh, majority of my world is social media. Yeah. And I say to people, um, despite me earning my income from social media and despite me encouraging people to use it as a business tool, I actually think that part of it is not helping us be better human beings. Absolutely. So I'll give you, I'll give you an example. You know, we know about influencer culture and these unrealistic body images and all that yeah. kind of stuff, but I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing trends whereby maybe this is just obvious to everybody, but I'm seeing it in the business world. Uh, you know, we see it on Instagram, people with the perfect body, the perfect life. And then you look at their pictures and go, my holiday pitch didn't look like that. And um, when I was on holiday in Dubai, the first proper big, decent holiday I'd had in years. Yeah. 
and there was people on the beach there and all they had was selfie sticks doing poses and i'm like is is this is this what we've become that actually people are just going away to show the world they're going away yeah yeah so it's a real ego aspect isn't it yeah but i've i've seen it in a business context whereby you see ceos and founders and they're like hey we work chilling with a great team and all of this stuff and oh we've had a record month and and it's presenting a warped view of what real life is like yeah. but the scary bit is some people are buying into it and then looking at their own world looking at their own business and going why am i not that what's wrong with me and I, i've seen it in the individual because you know instagram but i'm actually seeing it in business i mean are you seeing this that that this kind of unrealistic perceptions being created Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I've been there at different stages um, in our business, which I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about shortly. Yes, we are seeing it, which is why I had then created this heart centered approach, because if we can really tap into our own heart centered approach, you know, every how you approach your heart centered living and your heart centered business will be completely different to mine. Because for one, I'm a female, you're a male, different experiences, different life experiences. Um, and so I encourage our clients to really take a look at their own heart centered approach. And that might mean on the journey to get to that, you've got to realize that actually um, I want to I, I do want to build my business in a very external ego driven space. But actually, you know, focusing it on from a very ego, um, egotistical, ego driven space will only take you so far where it then leads you to burnout. It realizes you, you actually don't love what you're doing. Actually, is is it all about the money? Is, is money what's driving you but actually if you keep tapping back into your heart um, and into the heart you know the heartbeat of your organization that your heartbeat is the business leader and so what I find a lot of the time is people realize actually do you know what I, I need to rest more I want to create my business in a different way I want to work in a different way actually do I really actually I need to recruit more people so that I can be not as visible in the business so I'm seeing it especially in the last 18 months I'm seeing um, business owners wanting to take a complete different approach to uh, to how they're operating, even in some of the corporate work that we do. So I do a lot in the wealth management, FTSE 100 um, space, FTSE 100 um, space, um, and, and the recruitment space. People are definitely wanting to make changes in the way that they're living, the way that they're operating, the way that they're thinking. But it, for some of them, it will take time because there's a culture that's been created that they need to make changes with. So there's a lot of dysfunction in some of those areas when it comes to their people, their purpose, and their processes. Mm -hmm. So, so where do you where do you start when somebody's in that place? Because, like you said, there, there's people who are kind of stuck between two worlds. Yeah. There's that space of, do you know what? I don't want that thing that I've been pursuing. I, or I don't want it in that way. Yeah. Yeah. How do you kind of get yourself from that place where you're kind of like, I want to be over there, but I've set myself up over here. Yeah. So it's a good point because this is what happens a lot of the time. Don't we? we? We're here and we're like, actually, do you know what? This is where I'm at, but I don't want to be here. I want to get to there. And people think that it's an overnight journey to get there. But what we do is we meet the client wherever they are. Typically, often it might be that we meet them um, with their people processes. Um, some, again, it depends on organization, depends on leader. Sometimes we have to meet the leader where they are to get the clarity of thought in a safe space of actually, do you know what? I need some time. I, I need an opportunity to just pause and think. Where am I going? What's important? Is this what I want? I don't want to be working these crazy hours anymore. So it could be around their, their thinking. Um, it could be around the purpose of, of actually, I do love what I've created, but actually I just want to build it in a different way. I want to, I want to transition in a different way. And so what happens partnering with us helps them add that we partner with the clients around their thinking about, okay, how can you transition? What's the journey of transition? How do you cross one, one bridge to the next bridge? What does the journey look like for that? Um, and, and it's a journey, you know, sometimes it could be a number of sessions to, to get that client there. Sometimes it could be a six month process. Um, I know I worked with one client last year and that, that took us about six months to transition from one, one part of her business to another. And then, you know, a year on, she's actually 
invested in another business. So it, it's a journey um, because people are still doing their day-to-day, day-to-day job. So we kind of do a life audit as such. So we do a life audit in their own life. And then we do a work audit, which is called our Syncing Up Heartbeat Framework, where we looked at we look at all of those components that I'm, I'm sharing there with you. And mm-hmm. you know, we meet people where they are, and then we create the relevant program, the relevant mm-hmm. support that is, is needed for them. And what I certainly find um, is the clients that we work with value that space of, of actually a confidential space, a safe space where they can explore their right, maybe things that they hadn't even thought about because they've been so much been trying to navigate the the the, the um the, the troubleshooting, the people issues, the challenges that they're experiencing. So just taking an opportunity to catch their breath um, is is so helpful for them. Mm-hmm. Do you think um, I've met a couple of people where they've been in kind of the corporate space? And they've run at a million miles an hour doing things. And then they go, they reach a point, I don't know whether it's a midlife crisis or not, or but, the, but they reach a point where they go, who am I? Yeah, yeah. So ident- identity, absolutely. I've experienced that even myself. So when I had burnout 10 years ago, um, I came out of being number one in the company for six years consistently, earning really well to this burnout. So as I then came out of that, it was like, who am I? I don't want to be that number one consultant anymore. I don't want to be working, you know, 60, 70, 80 hour weeks anymore. Not, that doesn't make me happy. So there was an identity change of, of actually who am I? What do I, what do I want? Um, how am I going to develop myself? Who's going to help me with that? Um, and so I got help to develop myself through that. Um, I think sometimes what happens is this chaos and this, this crisis happens and then we want to make a change. And, and certainly the work that for some, with some people that we work with is it's also about doing the work before it's likely to, to blow up, um, before it's likely to happen that you want to make some change. So you're really forward planning. Um, and, then, and then also it's about really determining, OK, actually, if I do want to work less, that's okay. What does that look like? You know, that's something I found quite recently when I returned back to work after cancer. I love work. I love the work we do, but I want to work less. So it's like, how do you transition what what that looks like? Or it might be for some people is actually I've been operating at an okay level, but now I want to go to the high performance. Now I want to go to the next level. Now I want the growth for the next level. Okay, so what does that look like from your people, from your processes, who you're working with? What's your infrastructure? And so, you know, going from that one place to that one place is a transition. It's it's transformation. It's tra- mm-hmm. transformation in yourself. And I like to talk about it. It's a lot of the heart work. It's, it's your beliefs. It's it's the way in which you operate. It's your imposter. It's your confidence. It's the habits. It's the behaviors. It's the transformation. It's your spirituality. It's how much play have you got in that time? How much are you developing yourself? What are you putting into your mindset to develop in those areas and a lot of the time people aren't developing themselves which is why people struggle with it so much mm-hmm. so so just um you're on facebook i'm on facebook we'll just have a little rant about facebook for a minute yes and you're on linkedin and this is kind of my question here um kind of what do you find uh, social media great tool for getting you connected with lots of people who you would never meet otherwise but I see that the coach space is quite big on Facebook. It's huge on Facebook compared to LinkedIn. It seems a bit more grown up on LinkedIn and a bit more mm-hmm. sensible. But professional. Of, I like to say more professional on, on LinkedIn. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff on Facebook. How, how would somebody choose a good coach? What are the, how, how do they decide who's going to actually help them versus who's good at marketing? <laughs> Such a good, relevant question. So, so what I would say is do your research and due diligence. Find out exactly what that person is, like what their values are, how they've grown their business, how long they've been in that space, why they are doing what they're doing. Um, and what gives them the credibility? Are they credited? What sort of training have they been through? What is the who are the clients that they've actually supported? And I, I would say, and this is something I've definitely learned from over the last eight years, is you know go and consume that person's content for a while before you actually go and invest straight away. Do your research. Um, you know, have a call with that particular person, and, and also go with your you know do the values align? Um, are they trying to push you into a sale? Like what does it what does it look like for you? Because I think some, like you say, people will sell the marketing story. You get into work with them 
and then it's nothing like that. Um, so I would say take your time in making that decision because that will impact your people and, and the journey that you're going to go on to. And actually really be clear about where you want help with and go and find those people that are, that are able to, to give you that help. Um, and don't, you know, if, if it's something that you want help with, with let's say co content writing, you're going to go to somebody who is a content writer, like go with, with people that are very specific in that space. Um, and that's what I would say. Um, don't rush the decision. I know there's been times when I've rushed decisions and, and I've gone with my gut and or I'm not gone with my gut and it's ended up impacting me massively. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like um, uh, the, the coaching space is notoriously difficult, I think, because, you know, I've met a lot of coaches that are really good at what they do and won't overstretch yeah. their marketing, shall we say. Yeah. Um, that's code for sell, oversell something. Yeah. And then I've also met some coaches that are really solid and and don't don't sell themselves strongly. And I think yes, you should you should be shout that person over there should shut up, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you should be front and center. Yeah. And I think you know it's really easy to to you know I see this the people who say I can transform you in 90 days or 30 yeah. days or, and we love yeah. those quick fixes, but sometimes it is, well, uh, not sometimes it's always process, isn't it? Yeah. Always because there's a journey, there's a journey to get to A to B. It takes time. It takes investment. It takes a focus. Um, and it takes you to also put the work in. And I think sometimes we look at coaches to fix the problem. The coach is there just to empower you for you to take the right action and to be accountable to the action that you're going to take. That's right for you. That's right for you um, and your business. Um, and I think it's, um, it, it can be a really oversaturated market, can't it? It can be a really, you know, it can put a lot of people off around the coaching space. And this is where I think you tapping into your heart, your story, you know, being really clear about where your expertise, where your talents are, how your business can help, um can and, and being authentic you know this is i had a call with a, with a client last week that we've been doing some work with since january um and she said you know the reason they work with us is because i'm we're very authentic and and what you see is what you get what i display online is is what the process is when they work with us now that's taken a long time to get there and we still work on that every single week it's something we, we continue and maintain um but it's a journey that takes work to to maintain that doesn't it mm -hmm. Yeah, you're constantly perfecting your craft. And yeah. I, I can't remember who told me this. You might have said this when we met last year. I can't remember whether it was you, or, but it sounds like something you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was along the lines of a good coach will help you understand the answers you already have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they will almost borrow you the self-belief until you've got it and then you can transition and then go on your own and, and do it on your own. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and part of that is evolving, which is what that meaning is behind there. And, the, you know, I think very often we are, you know, we're driving, driving ego and, and it's all about like me, 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 I, I, I. But actually, if we evolve, which the meaning of that is to develop naturally into that better, more advanced state, that's when you are able to take the right inspired action that's right for you mm -hmm. and that 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 might lead you somewhere to where you thought you might not have have ended up or it might take you to somewhere else better but there's always learning and i always say the journey to success you will meet failure along the way and it's the learning it's the learning along the business mm -hmm. which sometimes can really hurt you when you're, you're developing your business can't it but it's, it's 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 like what are the things that you want to be doing in your business? How do you want to stand out? What do you want to represent? How do you want to stand out in the crowd amongst everybody else? I remember I worked with a coach for seven years ago, and he he was kept saying to me, "How are you standing out? What is different about you? How are you standing out?" How? And it's they're tough things to to get your head around. But if you can put the work in, that will make a huge difference. Which which I know is the work that you and um you know maverick do which is you know huge in helping clients you know understand their messaging their content how they market themselves it's huge mm. so just one final thing i want to ask you 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 keep talking about heart centered mm -hmm. can you for a for a, a northern unemotional person like me 
Can you break down what that means? What does yeah. that mean? Well, actually, before I answer it, what does it mean to you? So instantly you've said non-emotional, northerner. So what? when I say the word heart-centered, what does it mean to you? Do you know, but that's, that's the, I, I think caring, I think yeah. compassionate, mm -hmm. I think um, kind of, there's there's a an inner um like rudder in a knowing in a belief yeah in yeah. a belief and and some i'd almost say i'm mixing metaphors but like a gut instinct yeah. of this is who we are and this is what we're about yeah yeah so there's elements of that too but i think what happens a lot of the time is we are operating from our ex external world aren't we of okay i need to do this because of this i need to do this because it's showing this i need to be visible because of this and our external world drives our behaviors and our habits and we don't start to look at our internal world of actually how am i operating what's important to me what are my values what am i enjoying doing what do i love doing where's the courage where's the confidence where's the faith where's the belief where's the lead self leadership you know all of these things and so there's matters of each of our hearts that need attention and, and we don't we don't really pay attention to the matters of the heart until we really have to until we completely burnt out or we don't want to we don't want to feel those emotions of joy or because um, we maybe haven't experienced joy in a certain way so so the matters of the heart are it's your courage it's your belief system it's your strength it's um, it's areas of your calmness, your um, your curiosity, the creativeness with, within you, um, and often you can feel it. Um, and, you know, it's about the feelings, the, tapping into your feelings of okay, what am I feeling here? What is feeling aligned? What's feeling authentic? And sometimes the feeling of of what the authenticity and the um, and the aligned isn't where you thought you might end up. So it's being brave enough to speak up the truth of what's important for you. And it takes time to feel this. It takes time to tap into that. It's that, that real piece of clarity. It's that piece of feeling, um, feeling of, of, of taking the action. So it's, it's really taking a discovery upon your internal heart, your mm -hmm. internal world, that then will represent your external world versus going external and, and, and taking the action. It's actually marrying both of them up together. Mm -hmm. It's um, yeah. It's it's uh, I, and for some, so I know sometimes when I've been running at a million miles an hour, when I stop, there's this lag between the kind of Dean that's been running a million miles an hour and the actual Dean. Yeah, yeah. I, am I am I talking nonsense, or does that make no, sense? No, no, absolutely. Because all of my clients experience that. So, but what what my passion is and this is what i love helping my clients with is is making sure that you can operate from actual dean mm -hmm. at least every day yeah. and you can i because i've done it myself and i've seen my clients do it it'll take a journey to get there but it's actually it's really because then you make the right business decisions you then are coming from that place of of actually this is what's really important this is what the business decisions that that are really important and it's a shift of behavior it's a shift of a different type of leadership you're self-leading yourself you know and a lot of the time you know when we're in a self-leadership position we're coming from a place of calmness we're coming from a place of curiosity we're coming from a place of creativity coming from a place of confidence you know all, all of those c's really but when we're running 100 miles an hour often we are running from that external view don't we and i've definitely noticed and i've seen this with our clients over the last 10 years the more you slow down and take the right inspired heart-centered action in your own heart-centered heart -centered approach is the way that you're going to create the results that you want to create because you're not rushing ahead. You know, we're so busy wanting to work hard, learn to work harder and work faster. But what about if you learned more about your heart and what's important in, in the areas mm -hmm. of your values in your heart? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be a different, you know, wouldn't that show something different? Yeah, it's interesting um i don't know whether you've um heard about i mean i i love this concept um called first principles have you heard of, heard of no, it no i haven't no so, so it's actually something aristotle coined the phrase of it and it was um elon musk brought it into more of a mainstream 
concept and it's kind of related to what you're talking about, but I use it on my side in terms of marketing and stuff is that there's, there's three parts to it. Challenge the assumptions, break down the problem and then create the solution. That's the mm. crux of it. Yeah. And often what I see, and maybe this is where we kind of, you know, overlap a little bit is I see a lot of companies and a lot of people so driven to a goal that they're pushing it on that goal and they don't realize that if they stopped and broke it broke it down they'd actually find an easier way to get to the goal yeah. Yeah. and the reason elon musk brought it to such kind of notoriety is because he wanted to do the whole space thing the whole space thing very flippant way of putting it but and he went the problem is the rockets are too expensive Mm-hmm. so he went to nasa and nasa said oh if you can save us money on the rockets we'll give you a contract and he looked at it and nasa have said we've tried we've tried we've tried so he went to the russians when we were friends with the russians and said how do you build it and he re- figured out that actually you could save a few million by using russians rather than but it still wouldn't solve the problem mm-hmm. What he actually needed to do is come back to the beginning and go, let's figure out another way of doing this because it was costing them something like four billion to put a rocket in space. And it's like, you can't do that every week. So, so he broke everything down and realized, okay, what's the best way to get to the place I want to be and built that rather than let's engineer a cheaper version of the rocket, cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. Mm. And now he does rocket launches for 62 million a pop. Yeah. And look at that. But that was the journey to get to the goal, isn't it? So so I love the analogy that you've used this. It sounds like he took the right action, stopped what he was doing, took the right action. That led him somewhere else that then took him somewhere else. And he was curious. And then look at where he ended up. Um, And there's something about being an entrepreneur and being resilient Mm -hmm. and not giving up because it will take you to, I always say to people, it's always the journey to get to the goal. It's always the journey to get to where you need to get to. And we lose sight of that. We, we're too impatient. We're too impatient as people and as, as business owners, we want it all now. But actually, it's the journey to get there, isn't it? It's what you learn along the way. It's the people that are there to help you. It's wherever that leads you on next. And it's the action, isn't it? It's the action that, that's, mm-hmm. that's needed. And I think, again, sometimes maybe procrastination happens too often. And often yeah. procrastination that will happen is when our goals are bigger than our energy levels. And I talk a lot about that, about our energy, our physical energy, our mental energy, our social energy, our spiritual energy, um, and our emotional energy. And I think for business people, a lot of the time, the emotional and the spiritual are the ones that don't get the most, don't get get enough attention. But we should be really doing one thing in each of those areas daily. It's interesting you said that. (laughs) Procrastination was when our goals are bigger than our energy. Bigger than our energy levels. I'd never thought about it like that. It's a fascinating way to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And being really clear with your priorities, you know, like what are my priorities right now? You know, health being always number one. And then you're able to function and create those really ambitious goals underneath that because you're coming from a place of being more energetic. You're coming from a place of being healthier. You're coming from a place of a better growth mindset, a clearer mindset. Wow. Brill. So, Kiki, um, this is all unscripted, right? We haven't scripted. This is all totally off the, you know, I don't know what Kiki's going to say. She doesn't know what I'm going to say. Um, how do people work with you? How do you run? What's What does that look like? Is it just kind of the book a session? How do you work them? Because obviously it's a process. Yeah. So. How, how does that work? So for our consultancy side of our business, where that, that tends to be in a lot of um, where we would go into a small business or a corporate organization and we would actually meet the client where they are. So our first step would be an initial um, complimentary coaching, coaching conversation, coaching consultancy conversation, finding out exactly what the needs are. Is it that a client wants to develop a, a specific workshop um, initially to, to, to start the process? Or if they want to do a full process, it tends to be nine months where we go through our syncing up heart 
heartbeat framework, which is what I was talking about, the, the people um, management, the process, the purpose, um, and that's delivered in a series of some one-to-one -one coaching sessions, some, some team development sessions, um, and we, we tend to bespoke, a lot of our consultancy is bespoke depending on the organization um, on, on, the, on the consultancy side. And then if it was somebody who was um, a leader within an organization and they said, you know what, actually, I can see what Kiki's saying here. I need to make some time for me and my well-being. I need to get clear about my purpose. I need to get clear where we're going. We're doing great stuff, but I need to make a, make a change. We tend to work with clients between six months to 12 months one-on-one -on -one. and that that's a series of one-to-one of -one coaching sessions and we we look at everything life health work everything working in synergy together and making sure that that works really well so and that's a, an again a, a free consultation initially to find out where you're at what your support is you know wh where you are what sort of support you're looking for how often some clients it tends to be um once a week some clients it tends to be once a month uh, to be able to implement the work um with that so, so there's two sides so we, we one element where we go into the organization and we do the culture we do the development we partner with the organization or i work with the particular leader themselves holistically on all of those uh, mm. those, those those things there okay so um and best place to get in touch with you so you can visit our website so we've got two websites so www.kikikirbycoaching.co.uk or our consultancy, which is www.kikikirbyconsultancy.co.uk, or I'm very active on social media. On LinkedIn, you'd find me at Kiki Stanton. On Instagram, you'd find me. Both the pages have got, um, I've got the names, um, and then on Facebook. Um, but also, more than happy, a lot of clients just reach out and send an email to hello at kikikirbycoaching.co.uk, um, and just contact contact us that way. And we've also got a podcast called the Kiki Kirby Podcast, um, which is evolving in a heart centered way and that's in all the obvious all places spotify um spotify you know our every, website. every business now is like a, a media organization yes, they are they are <laughs> they have to be they like are. podcast youtube linkedin facebook yeah. it's we're, like, not on, we're not on we're not on youtube but we are every we're, we're all in those other places yeah. it's yeah. it's it's the thing isn't it we're all we're all it seems we're all uh, media companies and we're all media personalities these yes. days. We're having to do everything, which is why it's so important for us to really understand our priorities. So for me, one of the things I, I love doing this stuff, but one of the things I find is I love my quiet time mm. afterwards. I yeah. love the kind of like, I'm just going to sit here for a bit now. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it, it is quite, you know, unless you're kind of a massive extrovert where you kind of every human interaction takes you another level, yeah. it can be quite tiring. Yeah. But wouldn't you say that that's something you've learned as a business owner as time has gone on as you've developed? Oh, yeah, I think absolutely. I think I've I've learned that um, I've learned a couple of things that about how my communication style is very direct, very straightforward, which also, I've learned that some people don't get that that's my style. So somebody will go, I'll say, well, what are we talking about? Give me, cut to the chase. What are we talking about? I don't need the story. I just want to know what it is. So I'm kind of like that. But also what I've learned is that um, whilst I do all of this stuff and I do live webinars every week and all this stuff and I do these videos and podcasts and stuff like that, actually, well, you've met me in person. I'm a very yes. quiet person you in, are, in real life. You are. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I'm like, um, hello. Um, get me talking about my specialist subject. I'm all right, but actually yeah. meet me in person. I'm like, hello, all right. Yeah. yeah. Really low key and chilled out. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. Kiki, thank you so much for coming on. Hopefully, you, uh, I haven't put you on the spot too much. Oh no, thank you for having me here, and I really admire. You know, I've I've really loved meeting you along the journey the business journey and i know you've come into our um you know into our business and done some stuff with, with some of our clients and just love what you do very authentic very real really stand out so thank you for having me on here and i um, look forward to having you on our podcast um, yeah, that'd be cool. future too. so thank so, you everybody thank you everybody for joining us go uh, wherever we're you're watching this listening to this you'll find kiki's links to her social media and contact details 
do go check out what she does. I see her on Facebook all the time and she's sharing amazing stuff. So go check out what she's up to because it is awesome stuff. And thank you again for joining in with this episode of the podcast. And we'll be back next time with another interesting person that will help you in your life and your business.